Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, and uh, um, I'm pleased to, to be here today, although uh, uh, concerned that uh, I am yet uh, once again back before uh, this House and pleading with the government um, in a way that uh, is similar to what I did about five years ago when uh, Jack Tyndall, a farmer from the Algoma area, uh, drove all the way to, uh, to Ottawa uh, to speak with the um, NDP caucus at that time um, and to uh, speak uh, to the uh, government and, and the country through the, through the media about uh, um, a huge challenge facing the uh, farmers uh, of our area, reflective of the challenge that was facing farmers, cattlemen particularly, um, across, uh, across the country, uh, the BSE was uh, in its, uh, uh, it was full force, uh, full bore coming at us. And uh, we were asking the government at that time to engage, get involved, uh, help us out here. Well, here we are uh, five years later and we're back again and the situation uh, isn't any better. Uh, there was some movement uh, for a time uh, and some programs put in place, but uh, uh, over the last uh, couple of years, uh, we've noticed uh, lots of um, uh, big announcements, uh, but uh, really no substance. Uh, when the farmers themselves uh, uh, go to uh, access some of the new programs that uh, have been uh, spoke of uh, by government. They really aren't there. They're difficult to access. And at the end of the day, some of them, uh, even uh, if uh, you move to appeal, for example, are, can be harmful uh, to, to the farmer. I just uh, I want to say that uh, when I was here um, five years ago, we had some 200 farmers um, in our area. Uh, raising uh, all kinds of uh, a product uh, to sell into the local market and to, uh, to export. Now we're down to 80, um, and that number is, is, is dwindling uh, with each uh, month that goes by. Um, that's the way it's trending, and if it continues in that direction, and I would suggest that that's probably the pattern across the country, that we will uh, soon uh, not have any small family farms uh, left at all uh, in Canada, uh, and even the bigger, bigger farms. And we have today with us some um, uh, representatives of the Ontario Cattlemen's Association and the Canadian Cattlemen's Association and the National Farmers Union, who will speak to uh, about these uh, these issues and how they're impacting the this province uh, and the country as, as well. But I want to first invite Jack Tyndall up, uh, who is the farmer that I speak of uh, from our area, who's been a champion uh, for a number of years now through the Cattlemen's Association, um, uh, trying to uh, bring attention to uh, the very real challenges that uh, farmers who, uh, back five years ago, uh, at least had some equity in their operations. Now he tells me uh, that equity is gone. You know, and so they're flying without a net. Um, and today he wants to uh, address uh, uh, the um, House of Commons, spoke to our caucus this morning, uh, speaking to uh, members of uh, the other parties on, on the Hill, but wants to speak through the press here this morning. So Jack, please. As Tony mentioned, um, years ago, several years ago, we were here. Beef industry was in a crisis. And through the efforts of many, many people across Canada who raised their voices and put their efforts into it, there were some programs developed and put in place to alleviate that problem. Um, the crisis is still here. It's still, we're in worse shape than we were at that time. And those programs are no longer working. The conditions of those programs dictate that most of us aren't eligible for them anymore. And we're asking the government to take a look at those programs, in particular the Canadian Agriculture Income Stabilization Program, now called AgriStability. We're asking the government to take a look at those programs and explain to us why they don't work and why they're not fixing them to make them work. Thank you.